Hi, I'm Brick Road. Let's play Antichamber. This game is so minimalistic, it doesn't even have a title screen. There's no title screen. It just has the opening splash, that's when the game loads, and then poof, you're looking at a fetus in a womb. Every journey is a series of choices. The first is to begin the journey. Maybe I should have opened the LP on that quote. I should have read that. That's how I should have started. Let's rewind a bit. Let's pretend like I started out by, okay, you're looking at the fetus, right? Let's pretend I started out the video with every journey is a series of choices. The first is to begin the journey. I love journey. Don't stop believing. Um, this is Annie Chamber. This is all you need to know. <laughs> everything how to play the game you got a timer here it's going to count down it starts at 90 minutes i've got everything looks real nice here um you see the resolution i'm playing at you know normally you don't see the option screens in the let's plays that i do you're seeing behind the curtain here i don't even upload my stuff at 1080p that's just ridiculous um this is a puzzle game uh reminiscence of kind of like mist it's not like Myst at all. I'm, I'm comparing it to Myst because I've only done a couple of puzzly adventure games on my channel. And Myst was the first and a lot of people really, really liked it. And then Riven was one of my most requested LPs until I finally broke down and did it. So I don't do a lot of puzzle game Let's Plays. And the reason for that is because there's very few excellent ones. And Antichamber is an excellent one because this game... This is, this is it. This is what the game tells you. This is what they drop you in. Um, it tells, that's, this is the only instruction you get in the game is click here. That's not true. There's some other obstruction. There, there are some other instructions that are kind of uh, obfuscated a little bit as you go into the game. So we do, we're going to start out Leap of Faith. But Any Chamber is a game about learning the rules. At the beginning of the game, all you know is you can look around with a mouse... Uh, you have a little dot in the middle of the screen. There's a timer counting down from an hour 30 before the world blows up, or who, who even knows? Who knows? Um, and you can jump, and you can hold down the shift button to walk, and that's it. That's really it. So here we are in the antechamber. Now, the secondary goal of the game, after learning the rules, is to fill up this wall. This is the moral wall. The first moral is every journey, blah, 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 something, something, fetus. And throughout this giant seventh dimensional super maze are many, many other morals. And eventually we're going to go through that exit door and win the game. So let's hop in here. Jump. I know how to jump. Pretty good, right? So we can... This is where we start. Um, this is what the game looks like. Very stark, minimalist graphics. Kind of a cool uh, way about it. We have what looks to be an elevator or something up top there up. Can't do anything with that yet. Now, so this game is all about learning the rules, and it's a very subversive game. They try to sell it as kind of like a like a, based on MC Escher, but it's really not, because it, it's a perfectly conventional game, and once you learn how it works, it will stop surprising you, but it will take a long time before it stops surprising you. So I'm going to actually teach you the rules as we go. The first rule is we've got these floors here that'll appear under your feet as you walk on them, but they disappear if you jump while you're near them. So the sign says jump, but if you actually jump into that hole, you'll land at the bottom. Now another rule is, if you stare at this eyeball long enough, just stare at it. Stare at it, it starts to close. And at, after a few moments, this is probably the longest, there's lots of these eyeballs, it's probably the longest one in the game. Not all of them take this long to finally blink out of existence. The wall fades. And here's one of the morals. Patience has its own rewards. Now I'm going to not do all the morals in that voice. I don't even know where that came from. Um, I'm going to keep them all clicked. So as I walk through the maze, if I retrace my steps, we, we can see where I've been. Because pictures uh, depict morals we haven't clicked yet, and words will depict ones that we have. So here we have a happy looking pregnant lady with very, very little hair on her head patience has its own rewards. Now, in any other game, this is, to give you an idea of what kind of game this is, in any other puzzle game, this would be a hint, right, to solve this puzzle about staring at the thing and being patient. But in Antichamber, you get the hints after the puzzle, so they're not really hints, they're morals. You have to learn the game on your own, but every time you learn the game, or every time you learn something new, the game rewards you by teaching you 
the little moral you're supposed to have learned. Now here's the next rule that we're going to play around with is lasers. Uh, you got a green door here. This means that we actually have to activate how many lasers? Let's see, probably three. Maybe six. This is like one third of that door is opened. And we see, yeah, it's three. We see three lasers. One coming through here, one coming through here, and then one coming through the wall here. It's blocked with these blue cubes. So we've actually hit a dead end. We can't do anything in this room yet because we can't do anything with blue cubes. But what we can do is hit the escape key and warp back to the hub. You can hit that anywhere to return to the antechamber. And then on the map, you can click to warp to anywhere you've been in the maze. So we're going to fill up this entire spot with maze, and we're going to fill up this entire spot. Oh my god, what's this? What's this here? Some kind of horrific worm cube monster. Well, it's gone now. We'll probably not have to worry about that anymore. So, there is sequence breaking in this game. There is a lot you can do in this game to uh, get out of the linear path of things. And we're probably going to do a little bit of that, but for the most part I want to kind of stay on track. In as much as there is a track in Antichamber, I kind of want to stay on it. Oh, and here we have a baby. Taking the first step can be harder than the rest of the challenge. And I guess the moral there is, because if you jump, you fall down. The floor disappears under your feet. You hit the bottom. Mm-hmm. So we have like a porthole here. We're hearing seagulls and things. That's kind of strange. And we have a sign here about falling. The sheep jumping off the cliff. Failing to succeed does not mean failing to progress. And that's absolutely true. In this game, usually, you'll see scenes like this where you'll fail, and then after you fail, you'll land in a new area. So we have this lighted floor. Let's walk around here. See what there is to see, right? Nice little dark maze. Confused man contemplating an arrow, and he says... Some paths are clearer than others. Well, this path was very clear indeed. It was lighted the whole way. Oh, 3D stairwell. Uh, let's go down first. Take the red stairs. Neat. Huh. Uh-oh. I guess, uh, he's trying to guess which hand the quarter is in. A choice may be as simple as going left or going right. This is definitely a choice. I guess this time we'll go up. So you can see how Annie Chamber do. Uh oh. Oh, see? Neither choice was correct. The choice doesn't matter if the outcome is the same. So some of the signs are linked, like this one. He's like, hey, which of my hands am I holding the uh, $100 bill in? And then over here he's like, psych, there was no $100 bill. Also, I screwed your wife. And then the guy got really mad. So no matter where we go, we're always going to end up in the same place with these stairs. So you can kind of see how the maze starts to loop in and around on itself in weird and bizarre ways. But we went back the way we came and this guy's house is on fire. And also he dropped his briefcase. How sad. When you return where you've been, things aren't always as remembered. Well, I don't remember there being a green corner here. So sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. And this really doesn't make any sense. Like, really doesn't make any sense with all these colors and... there's This is not a regular 3D structure. There's no way you could construct this in the real world. And when I first played Antichamber, I'm like, well, then nothing makes logical sense in this place. Anything can be anywhere. It's just teleporting you around or whatever and creating the illusion that there's cohesion to this game. But the game, like I said, is all about rules. And that's one of the very satisfying things about it is learning the rules. For example, when you see a red door, break the red lasers and it opens. Also, you can break the red lasers to close it, and now we're trapped in this room. But there is a sign. Oh, it's the escape key. Some choices leave us running around a lot without really getting anywhere. We've learned a lot about choices. So what is what is our... Uh, what have we found on our map here? Oh, we got a new moral. If you don't like where you've ended up, try doing something else. And you can see we've already missed a couple of morals on the wall, but we'll go back and get them. So, to kind of decipher the map a little bit, the spinning X is where we entered last time. The uh, pulsating circle is where we exited when we hit our escape key. Now, the little circular rooms are dead ends. We can't warp back to those. The square rooms here, though, 
these little squares, this, like you can see the path. I worked in here, I walked down here, jumped across, or fell down, went down the uh, dark tunnel, came over here to the stairs that don't go anywhere, turned around, and then ended up at a dead end. So you can trace the path you took through the maze to kind of get an idea of how it fits together. The little squares are puzzles that you've completed. Many Paths to Nowhere is the name of this puzzle, and we've completed it. Once you figure out that all the paths just don't go anywhere, you end up at a dead end, there's nothing left to do there. The big squares, however, these, like these two, there's something remaining to do in A Jump Too Far and Into Darkness. And when you see a square like this, with a little nubbin coming off the side, that means there's a path we didn't take. So, let's go ahead and jump back and take the path. Oh, I guess we can't. It's too far. A jump too far, get it? Also, when we turn back around, the end, it's right there! Can I, can I get the sign from here? I can't even click the sign from here. So we can't get through this door. There's a bunch of red blocks in the way, and also purple sparkliness? And sparkly is just not good for anybody. Over there we have a pendulum swinging. So all we have to do is walk across. Well, the problem with walking across is the middle part here, we can't get around. Because if we try to jump over this little ledge here, it'll destroy the whole floor. But we can walk around it, and there we go. Oh, a cute little bunny rabbit. How we perceive a problem can change every time we see it. And that's true in this game, too. It'll dump you in rooms that have simple solutions, and then, uh... Next time you come through, there'll be something more complicated to do. So we got a couple of different paths we can take. There's one of those eyeballs over here. Oh, there's a door over there that just closes. That's fine. And then we got this pendulum. L. I. F. E. And this room is like an art gallery. And also, it's got a little pink block in the wall. The pink block, as far as I can tell, is an Easter egg. And it shows up in various parts of the maze. Uh, usually in secret areas, but you get to it pretty early if you can the art gallery here. And as you look at it, it tries to retreat from you. So we're going to send it all the way through the glass tube in the wall. Lots of glass tubes and walls in this game. We're going to see a lot of those. And if there's anything to do with the pink block other than locate it and chase it off, I haven't found it yet. So either it's just a little Easter egg and it's just to reward you for finding little hidden secrets throughout the game, or there's some like, deep extra meaning to it that I've never managed to figure out. One of those two things is true, and I don't know which one. I'm assuming it's just a little Easter egg that you can find in the maze at various points, but... I mean, I have played this game pretty exhaustively. I feel like I've... I mean, I've cleared the entire map. I've solved all the puzzles, and some of them hurt my brain. Like, my brain used to be in good condition. Then I played Annie Chamber a couple years ago when it came out. Then I had to take a nap for like six months. And when I woke up, I was never the same. We're almost done with this pink block. We just gotta chase it, finish chasing it around this wall here. We don't have to, we can just leave it there. It won't hurt anything. And then we'll go look around the art gallery and see all the cool stuff. I spent probably close to an hour, the first time I played this game, in this art gallery because I assumed there was something in it. And it's gone. It's, it's off to another part of the maze. Because every, every, in this art gallery, it's just everything is, uh... Like, none of these are even really hints. I guess you could interpret some of them as hints, if you really wanted to. Like, I don't know who Mia is, but... Like, this here I could interpret as a hint. And if you've played Antichamber, I guess you would know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't played Antichamber and you don't know what this may be a hint to it's not going to help you win the game. The game doesn't give you hints. Like, the game just doesn't. And each of these cubes... Oh, there's Pong. That's cool. A broken antechamber symbol. Spinny thing. So yeah, the first time I played this game, I spent probably close to an hour in this art gallery trying to interact with all the various things on display here. And I eventually left. And it was very early in the game. Like, I, had just, I hadn't really figured out what kind of game it is yet. But... I didn't actually try walking through the boxes. Like, this box is solid on three sides. Wait a minute. Kind of tells a little story. Because, like, the guy's going to jump over the pole, and then he lands on the other side. Okay, cool. But this one you can actually walk into, which is neat. And we got... What do we have here? Oh, it's just a desert. It's just a desolate field. 
When you absorb your surroundings, you may notice things that you didn't see before. That sign's actually on multiple walls. Okay, so... This is, uh, this is Find the Seams. I think this is Find the Seams. And the goal here is to, uh... Walk in the maze and immediately go out the way you came in. Hey, wait a minute. I took two left turns. That shouldn't have brought me back to where I was. But the puzzle here is basically just look for the colors on the walls. Blue is no good. You don't want blue. You want green. So you go to green. And then... Oh, I went, that, that was the wrong way. Let's find another green. There we go. There's another green. And anytime you can see green, you're in good shape. As long as you stay on a green path... Never mind. I'm back at the beginning. Um... Oh, there we go. Hey, this looks promising. We made it! And weightlifting with no pants on. Interesting. If you never stop trying, you will get there eventually. Okay. We can go left or right. I'm going to go right because I'm right-handed. And this just looks... uh Uh-oh. The dog chasing its tail. How apropos... Some choices can leave us running around in circles. And the first time I played this game, I hit escape, because I thought that's all there was to do there. But, as you can see, there's still a puzzle. Stuck in a rut is what it's called. So we've actually cleared finding the seams now. Okay, so we got through finding the seams. And the puzzle is... I mean, it, this is one of the few times the game actually does give you a hint beforehand. It tells you, if you never stop trying, you'll get there eventually. So the idea is... I mean, it doesn't matter which direction you go. You just run in circles, and you'll see the dog. Well, we're going to see words, because I already clicked the dog. Yeah, there it is. In a few seconds, we'll see the words again. But if you pay very careful attention, you'll see the squares on the wall, the checker pattern on the wall, is very, very slowly elongating. So we're making progress going around, and eventually we get through. And we're both weightlifting champions with no pants division. Raw persistence may be the only option, other than giving up entirely. But we ended up back where we started. These little arrows are kind of clues, too. They tell you... Like, you don't have to follow the arrows if you don't want to. I mean, we're going to ignore this one, because it's pointing at a door that just keeps closing on us. 